Today we're going to discuss pool planning and pro planner. Let's get into it. There are five steps to creating a pool plan and executing it. They are number one, identifying tasks and creating an initial timeline. Number two, setting target dates for each task and assigning responsibility. Number three, reviewing potential roadblocks and coming up with solutions. Number four, monitoring progress of the project throughout its duration. Number five, analyzing the results, successes, and areas needing improvement. Let's start with step one. To start a pool plan, first, it makes sense to come up with an initial timeline and identify the tasks that are associated with it. So in Pro Planner, to start that initial timeline, you'll need to start in the master schedule. At the master schedule level, you can determine logic and flow of the project, but you can also determine durations for each activity. In this case, we're going to be focusing on activity 77, data hall overhead, with the timeline or duration of 15 days. Cool. Now let's jump down to the look ahead and put this plan in action and start building it out. The second part of step one is identifying the task. So in Pro Planner, it's really easy. At any activity, in this case it's line item 77, data hall overhead, you can break that activity down into as many individual tasks as necessary to successfully complete that installation of work. In this case, we have a good group of tasks. Now, in pool planning, from my experience and the experience that we hear from all of our clientele is, a large portion of time is wasted when we don't already have these tasks identified prior to starting the pool plan. So in Pro Planner, it's really easy. I'll go ahead and give my trade partners access to Pro Planner. They can access the look ahead and for the activities that they're associated with, they can go ahead and add more tasks to them with the understanding that they can only edit and touch and manage tasks owned by their company. So in this scenario, on Tuesday, we're having our pool planning meeting, but on Monday, I gave access to all the trade partners to be able to go in here and do exactly what you see on the screen. Have a nice line of tasks, that way when we start this pool planning session, all we need to do is come up with sequencing, identifying roadblocks, and figuring out how we're gonna move forward from there. But we won't need to spend time pulling information from everybody in the room because that has already been set ahead of time. They logged in a pro planner on their own and were able to help build out some of the building blocks to this plan. Moving into step two, setting target dates for each task and assigning responsibility. In pro planner, responsibility is assigned automatically. If your trade partners are helping you build the look ahead, their company will automatically populate aside the tasks that they're working on. For instance, unit strut layout is owned by Sellings Inc. Electrical layout is owned by Electrical Inc. We didn't have to do anything additional to get that information. It happens automatically when we bring our trade partners into the conversation. Furthermore to that point, in some cases, it may make sense to identify a responsible party. Now, in that case, it could be the individual foreman, superintendent, or supervisor for that trade partner or trade. A good use case to why you would want to assign a responsible party is if we're on a project and we're running multiple crews from the same company and for the same trade, being able to identify which foreman, which supervisor, which superintendent for that trade partner is in charge of that crew so we don't get our wires crossed and we're aware of exactly who's responsible for exactly what. In this case, for the cases where it made sense, we even identified a foreman. But regardless, every task is associated with the company. That company is associated with the color, and that's what you see on the screen. Broken out by trade, broken out by task, and identified by the color of the company. Now, to set the target dates for the actual installation of the work, like any pool plan, you're going to start with the first task, identifying what it is that we're building up to in this case, we need to get a city inspection to sign off all of this overhead work. So from there, the conversation is with that understanding that that is the last task 
to take place for this activity to be successful, then who needs to precede that person and who needs to precede that person? And that's usually how these conversation goes. And in ProPlanner, understand that we've already created the task list ahead of time by giving access to the trade partners that are involved in this conversation. We can then have that pool planning that who goes next and who goes before that person conversation pretty quickly. In this case, we were able to identify these tasks and even come up with a somewhat of a sequence. We'll determine if that sequence makes sense throughout the course of this pool plan. So we already have a lot of that information ready. And that's sort of the benefit of collaborating with your trade partners on a web-based platform with unlimited users. We're going to go ahead and sequence this work. In some cases, we can have multiple trades working in the same area, but where that's not the case, we'll need to give them folks some space. So for now, we're going to call this a sequence that we're okay with, and we'll use this as the foundation for the next part of the conversation as we move into step three, which is reviewing potential roadblocks or issues and coming up with solutions. A pro planner to identify a roadblock and assign responsibility to that roadblock, it's as simple as determining which task is being held up by the roadblock. In this case, the mechanical hanger installation has a roadblock assigned to this. Looking over the plans, we realize that they're going to be working in an area that has live electrical equipment. We'll need to work with them to get MOP signed off by the GC safety director. You can easily assign responsibility to the person that will be ultimately responsible for getting this roadblock cleared, allowing for more work to take place. In this case, as a superintendent for this project, I'll take that responsibility. From there, we can even assign a date that is sort of that responsible date. If we don't get it by this date, then perhaps we need to resequence the work because we're going to receive an impact. Let's get this in by July 14th and create a roadblock. Also hearing that there is an issue potentially with fabrication or receiving materials for the HVAC crew. It's after the fabricator has delayed the submittal review because they didn't have the information that they needed. With the trickle down effect of a delayed submittal review process, now a delayed fabrication process, how does that affect our install date? As of today, we don't know, but we're gonna raise our hand that this is a roadblock and it needs to be addressed and managed by somebody on the team. I'm actually gonna pull in my project manager and see if he can't lean on these folks a bit and help us with the resolution to this. And of course, a city inspection is definitely a roadblock. Just being aware that this is something that we'll need to overcome and we want everybody to be aware that they need to be ready 100% for this inspection. Inspections are pretty far out, so making sure that we can get this inspection on the books and scheduled ahead of time is very important. Knowing that this city inspection should take place on the 28th of July, I'm going to give myself a couple of weeks 
July 14th to make sure that I can actually get this scheduled and that the city can actually accommodate that, creating that as a roadblock as well. Reviewing roadblocks in Pro Planner is as simple as jumping to the roadblocks tab and taking a look at open or remove roadblocks. In this case, I can see I have open roadblocks, some of those that we just created together. Turns out that the submittal review from the fabricator was actually turning around pretty, pretty quick. Good job, PM. We'll take that from open to removed, dropping it down into the log of removed, but we still have access to everything that we've worked through. And now letting us know that we only have three roadblocks to focus on for the remainder of this pool plan. Jumping back to the look ahead. Moving over to step three, monitoring progress of the project throughout its duration. So being able to update progress and keep track of that is obviously a big part of a pool plan. In Pro Planner, luckily, we can update progress for the overall activity, which is data hall overhead, which currently has a 0% progress, at the individual task level. So the schedule is only being updated by real information coming directly from the field. In this case, the Unicert layout is done 100%. Mechanical layout is done 100%. Electrical layout is done 100%. Plumbing layout is done 100%. And the strut hangers are about 50% done. Being able to monitor progress per task and also being able to update the overall progress of an activity from the task level. Notice previously data hall overhead was 0%. Now we're above 23%. So that's how you monitor progress of the pool plan and the project throughout the duration in Pro Planner. And this information directly feeds back into the master schedule. So if we jump to the master schedule, line item 77 would match progress at over 23%. Let's move into step five. Step five is analyzing the results, successes, and areas needing improvement. A couple ways you could do that in Pro Planner. One is at the master schedule level, being able to track where you are progress-wise versus your baseline. For line item 77, seeing that we're 23% done and ahead of schedule. Nice. The second way you could track and analyze your results, successes, and areas needing improvement is jumping to the analytics tab. So this is where you can get some great data and use this to learn from your experiences, gain from the wisdom, and also share winning results with other members of your team so they may replicate that on their upcoming projects. One of the pieces of information that I like the most is looking at the reason for variance pie chart. Here, directly from the field's mouth and from the supervising team of the GC, we can get a good understanding of what our problems were and on based on a percentage basis. So what I mean is we can see 16% of the time we encountered issues with our equipment that stalled and prevented us from completing a task and activity on time. Drawing 16% of the time prevented us from completing a task on time, and 11% was space avail availability. Trade stacking, getting material in there and making sure that we can get equipment in there. We're gonna be able to take that information, analyze it a bit, and then make better decisions moving forward. We can also switch over to the Roblox tab and see who on our team has been really getting into the planning and giving us a decent amount of heads up about a roadblock that may affect them before the work took place. In this case, you can see Jennifer is giving us 23 days of heads up about a potential issue. That's great. Omar with the sprinkler crew is giving us four days. That's not too bad either. What we're trying to avoid is folks coming on the day of a task or an activity starting and saying, hey, I can't do this and here's why. When ideally in Pro Planner, being able to identify that as a roadblock and raise visibility to it before it prevents this, the project from taking place on time and before we encounter schedule delays is one of the goals 
of the roadblock system. Identifying an issue, raising awareness to it, letting everybody see what the problem is, so collectively we can remove the roadblock and keep this project on schedule. Getting back to the look ahead as we round this conversation out, there's actually a few ways that you can look at this information on the screen. One of the ways I like the most, especially when in a pool planning setting is sorting this information by an end date. That gives us that more classic pool planning look. Now to socialize this information, super easy. Number one, everybody that helped me build, build this pool plan has access to see this information if I so choose. And then number two, we can easily print and socialize this with pro planners look ahead. We're going to change our print date to match our future planning. Remembering that we sorted by end date, we got a really good visual on the plan at hand. One of the things that I like most, and I'm hearing a lot from my clientele, is that they enjoy that we get away from the Gantt view on look aheads and have more of a focused calendar look. So me, as a carpenter on any, on any project site, can walk right up to a construction trailer, assuming I don't have access to Pro Planner. And I can get a printout like this from the GC team, and I know exactly what I'm working on. I know what company is working on which. I know who's responsible. I know if we have any roadblocks. I see a roadblock with city inspection, and we still have a roadblock with the mechanical hanger, mechanical hanger install. And furthermore, these numbers in these boxes represent the crew size commitment for each of these tasks. This is helping trade partners come up with manpower projections for your project, helping them help you keep a well-staffed project. They can also come up with material needs and even equipment needs. Having a document like this lends itself to conversations around stuff like what type of safety training do we need? Do we have enough laydown space for this work that's coming up? And that is how you do a pool plan in Pro Planner. Thank you.